Well, I first heard of Alan's music, I think it was 2007. I met a guitar player at Berkeley. His name was uh, Andy Berman. He was like, oh, you know, Holdsworth. I'm really into Alan Holdsworth. And I was like, oh, cool, I'll have to go check him out, you know. And so I found, I just like looked up Alan Holdsworth. And the, the most recent album at the time was, uh, I think, uh, All Night Wrong. And so I started there and I checked out Landry Loop and I just sat there in my, my room and I just took it all in and I just couldn't believe. <laughs> That's the first time I was hearing Alan. That was the first time I was hearing Jimmy. First time I was hearing Chad Wackerman. And I was just like, and then the whole album just went through and I just kind of sat there and I never heard anybody play guitar. It was just mind blowing. And so then I started diving into the studio albums, personnel on the different albums and, uh, it was just, it was such a treasure trove, you know, I found that I just, I, I got really obsessed with listening to it, you know, it was, just, it was the, besides the playing, it was just the music that really, like, from his music, I started branching out and checking out all the, his sidemen, like how, you know, Gary's music, I started checking out Chad's stuff, uh, and there wasn't that much on Jimmy Johnson, who struck me as, like, the most amazing bass player I think I'd ever heard in my life. Uh, and there wasn't much that I could find out about Jimmy. He was kind of, you know, I, I, I always kind of tried to keep an ear open for if he had an album coming out, but I couldn't really find anything, and uh, which made it all the more mysterious and more like, you know, you know, like this, like myth, this legend, you know. Uh, so I, I, I just started, you know, putting on, I think Water on the Brain was the first tune that I started getting my head around, you know, like I found a chart uh, in one of the school libraries and so I learned so much from Alan's music in terms of the role of the bass and how the bass could almost be the last thing that I add to the song structure if I'm making a harmonic chord progression I would do it the way I intend to just originally and then once I put bass in I really start to feel like the, the root movement of things because a, a lot of Alan's music doesn't move I mean, the bass notes by themselves. Like, that's so odd by itself. But given the harmony on top of it, or putting the harmony on top of it, just gives... And if you hear the chords just without the bass, too, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, that just sounds completely different. How... It, well, it... All the bass players that came before me in this band... Uh, all, all the bass players that came before me in this band are just absolute monsters. I mean, I, I would, especially in the past couple months when, uh, so uh, Virgil originally called me and asked me if I'd be interested in, in doing some gigs with Alan. And of course I, I would, I jumped on it. I could, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. So then I really realized, I, I realized that I had to dive deep into his music and really start checking out the treasure trove that's up on YouTube, you know, in terms of all the bands he's had, all the different ways he plays the songs live. And and I really started to soak in the sounds of the bassist then. It's like really paying attention to how Schooly sounds on Letters of Marquee versus how Jimmy solos on Letters of Marquee. And I realized how similar I do sound in like, in I, I, I really do have a, have a, a, like a certain, I don't know what they studied or how that, but we all have something very much in common and I'm, and I'm, I'm very, I've never really talked to, I've never talked to any of them, you know, and I would, I would, I would love to. I think I'm friends with Schooly on Facebook. I friended him and he lives in Reykjavik and in, in Iceland. And, uh, I'm there a couple, I, I got married there last year and I'm, I'm hoping at some point, you know, we're, we did our honeymoon there in October and we love Reykjavik. And I, now that I know he's there, I got to sit down with him and just, you know, get a lesson or something. I mean, honestly, it's about, it's about just, I want to sit down with all of them and just get a lesson from each of them and, and just kind of hear their stories from the early days, you know, and, and their time on the road. And, uh, you know, it'd be kind of cool to just pick their brain harmonically. Yeah. Like I, I think we all end up kind of thinking very major minor scale esque stuff, pentatonic. I, I know school use, uh, on the solo that I was checking out from, like it was 1992 with Steve Hunt and, uh, and Alan and Gary, and it was, uh, he was using a lot of pentatonic language. I feel like we're all coming from that pentatonic language in terms of soloing. 
you know. Um, and then for in terms of the freeness of the bass lines and everything like that, I think we all just, uh, it, we must have just, I don't think, I mean, I never really did much practicing with a metronome. Uh, I mean, I did a lot of practicing with drum programming and computers and things like that, but never like to a metronome but, and just always tried to get out there and play with different drummers and taking risks, you know, while playing with a different drummer and kind of trusting and relying on that, uh, that instinct of like, Hey, if I do this, you know, hopefully we will come back together like on one or in, that's what's interesting about Alan that I learned in rehearsals was he thinks in terms of ones. So like every chord that ends a uh, chord hit, it's one. And, it, and it's, it's the distance between that one to the next one that he, that he ends up thinking in terms of. So like if it's uh, that the bridge part on letters of marquee, da, 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 one, two, three, four, mm, that one. Mm. And he's, he's always thinking in terms of the, the, it's always one, which I find fascinating. It's never, it's never counting odd bars or odd meters or anything like that. Uh, which is funny because we're doing something in 11 for our shows and Alan's floating on top of it and totally gets it. <laughs> but he's, and, and, and it's, it's funny that he just, he's, he's just feeling one and then the distance between that next one. And, uh, that's fascinating to me. That's the most fascinating thing I've ever Dude, heard. Dude, cool. that's cool. Nuts. That's fucking Each thing is a moment and Sorry. everything stops. You're only talking. You're which the most is important the, thing. Which and is a... It has its own feeling and then that's the end of it. Which, which is, which is a huge risk, you know? But, but at the same time, it's... Everybody's Peter there Rivers with them, and I mean everyone. I mean, I I get it, you know. I love it. Yeah, I, it's, yeah. I definitely oh. I understand what he means, and that's kind of what I do too. And and that's how we. I mean, I mean I that's how we end up aligning together, you know. Yeah, or, I mean, or it's just a way to describe probably the that. subdivision or or some, you know. Yeah, because the real thing is the core. What is it doing? When does it end? When yeah. is the next? Anyway, 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 when's the right, next chord? Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> have this will be for later. <laughs> that's true. Um, next question. We're rolling. Uh, do you want to talk us through? Let's sing for a tune. Talk us through learning a tune. What sure. tune? And what, ah. uh, pick one. So you want me to pick. I'll pick part one because I'm just gonna, no matter what I'll pick part one. Oh, sure. totally. So, <laughs> um, learning the tunes for all these shows. Uh, there's there was really no charts. There's no. Uh, I ended up just kind of studying recordings from YouTube. You know, there was rough. There was. I guess I shouldn't say there's no charts, but there's rough charts. Like there's a. Uh, you know, Virgil had put together some charts that he had from like MIDI data that he had programmed, you know, that's and, um, is that Virgil? That's probably Virgil. Uh, Sounds like it at least. Probably this might be the last question then, because then I might have to. Well, then we're going to do the Mark Bass thing. We only need oh, two or three true. minutes for that. Okay. Um, or do you want to go into Mark Bass now? Come could in, do Mark Bass in. now. We'll close this. Yeah, it was, oh, I mean, good. so. Because right. I, I have I have so, so much stuff us, to set up, but, but oh no. I know talk I want to get this done. So, minutes on my no, dig. so uh, uh, learning all the tunes, you know, there's there's one tune in particular, Pudwood, that uh, Virgil emailed me the PDFs of, and he goes, "Hey man, these are Jimmy Johnson's charts for Pudwood." And I went, "Oh my god, great!" You know, because I was listening through the tune and I was kind of like, "Man, I you know, this is a." Uh, it's pretty next level harmony. This is going to make it a lot easier. So I was looking at the chart and I was like, wow, this does not make it that much easier to solo on because the chords are all polychords. And it's it's Jimmy's own under interpretation of Alan's chordal structure and his harmony and everything. But it's it's amazing like how he he thinks in terms of, and this is actually what Alan was talking to me about too, is that it's, you know, it's the chord and it's just the bass note underneath it and which changes everything. But like the first chord is actually, it's a C, but it's F in the bass, which is just, for me, it's just F major, but not to these, not to these guys. They're thinking in terms of C over F. It's not as just simple as boiling it down to one chord, which I actually do m most of the time. So the first chord, F major, like an A sus, you know, and then the next chord's an A flat major chord to me, but what's interesting is like it's again it's to Jimmy it's D flat sus over A flat, and it's like man it's, it makes it very complicated. But I, I 
after listening to his solos, I, I get why he puts that in the in the chart for himself. Because you got to separate out the solo chords that you're using from the bass notes that you're using to comp for somebody else. And it's just, it's it was fascinating to me to like sit in rehearsal. And actually, I, I learned a couple, like I was listening to all these live videos and uh and it's funny, I was playing along with the live videos and I was like, yeah, cool. But then I go to rehearsal and, you know, me and Steve are playing it together and it's like, oh, oh, wait, well, so that chord's not exactly this chord, you know, and, and he's coming from more of a keyboard uh, understanding. So we were, we had to kind of merge together our, uh, our harmonic understandings, you know, we had to kind of bridge this gap of, all right, well, this is what Jimmy had on the chart. But this is what Steve is actually thinking in terms of how it's recording, you know, or uh, not how it's recording, but how it's uh, how it's sounding. So it was a it was a really cool mesh between me and Steve trying to figure out the chord changes to Pudwood and and uh, learning how to solo over it too. It was really fun. Cool. All right. Cool. Um, let's do a bit of uh, okay. So let's go cor sure. let's go corporate. Sure. Um, <laughs> let's go corporate. So yeah. Let's pimp your soul. Please. Sure. So, um, for all uh, for all these shows with Alan, I've been using uh, Mark Bass gear. I've been using Mark Bass for uh, since two thousand nine. I think since I really kind of started my professional career, they helped me start my professional career. Honestly, uh, they've supported me from the beginning. They've always been really helpful. And and you know, if I ever had any questions about the gear, they would shoot me an email right back. <laughs> and now that there's you know, Facebook world. I'm friends with Marco from from Mark Base. He's he's friends with me on Facebook, and if I ever have any questions, he literally gets right back to me. They've been super helpful. Their artist relations department has been just amazing to me over the years, and I really can't picture myself playing anything else and being happy with both of my sounds, which I consider both my sounds like my bass sound. And then my lead sound, which is like, it really helps me get, it helps me get true representation of both of those sounds, as opposed to one or the other, which I find with a lot of amp companies, it's like you either get that super great bass tone and not that lead sound that you're looking for, or great lead sound, but not a really, you know, a nice bottom end or a nice, uh, you know, nice low mid kind of growl kind of thing so man it's just been it's been a pleasure to be a part of mark base for it's going on i think eight years now my partnership with them and uh looking to looking forward to many many more happy years being a part of the family and i think that's it cool right on. Think, dude thanks guys you oh my god <laughs> you have sold your soul in a beautiful fashion thank you <laughs> good uh...